questions are like intense too. That's like good question. Like, 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 like a question or, or two. Oh, like, oh yeah, no, I know. This is pretty good. Yeah, like, uh, this is so, so awesome. I see that. You know, like how they had that video of like a person saying, like, yeah. I, I was thinking it was just gonna be like a tiny little, like, 10 second thing, like, hey, yeah. this is like baptism but Sunday, go get dunked in some water. But how is this for the live? I'm confused. So, are they only so playing this once? I feel like they're gonna just go play with the recorder. They're gonna be watching the replay. On replay. Yeah. 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 So that's pretty <laughs> sick. About though, is like out back there. Yeah. We okay. Could you just get my coffee for me? Yeah. Thank you. It's just an American.
And I'm Sandy. And we are so excited that we get to be with you all again this morning on this beautiful, oh, sunny yes. morning here Gorgeous. at East Lake. Gorgeous. Such Absolutely great weather. Beautiful. It was I'm, I'm telling you, things around here were buzzing this morning. Like people were just like buzzing and I think it was the weather. Yes. Weather does that in Jesus. People are trying to get their boats out and get them yeah, right? get them uh, dewinterized. <laughs> yes. Oh hit man. Hit the lake this this afternoon. So pretty. But yes, it is definitely buzzing here. On my way in this morning, I saw so many people heading out. Wow. Yeah. And it I was heard full. the nine o'clock was pretty full. It was. It was. Uh, it was amazing. Filled with excitement and baptism. So we're gonna talk about all yes. that today. Yes, it's um, a good day. But we want to check in with you guys this morning and see how you're doing. Where are you watching Eastlake from this morning? So chime yeah. in and tell us. And we hope that you've had a great week. So Sandy, how was your week? It was good. Um, it was a busy week as always. I yes. think, I don't know if there's anything other than a busy week. I know, right? But it was good. We had the eclipse. Oh, was it a total eclipse of the no. heart? No. <laughs> we, we talked about singing, but we decided we, decided yeah. we weren't doing we that. We opted for better. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't actually see it, which was kind of sad because it was cloudy. Bit. Yeah. It was totally cloudy. I was so. at Liberty that day and they had a viewing out on the lawn for the students. Wow. So they they were giving out the eclipse glasses. Yes. And Stylish. they were all in this big area where I was sitting in and they were running in and out like as the clouds started moving or shifting. Fine. They were running in and out. So I ran out to see it. Yeah. And uh, whenever the clouds would move to let them see a little glimpse of it, they yeah. would just like start shouting. Ah! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so. My dad was in totality. Really? So he lives in Shelbyville, Indiana, which is, it came right over top wow. of Shelbyville. And so he was sitting out in his yard. And it just got dark. With his glasses. Yeah. He said it was really cool. Wow. He was trying to keep from getting a sunburn because he's like, you know, the rays yes. are still there. You sit out there for a couple hours waiting for it. So. Wow. But yeah, he well, thought, he said it was cool. That must be really cool to experience yeah. that. I know that there was a lot buzzing on the internet about the eclipse and the uh, <laughs> prophetic words I know that were being shared about it and yeah. how the eclipse path went through all of the towns named Nineveh. I know. Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh. I and know. And like, is this a warning from the Lord for us to <laughs> repent? And so yeah. we're all still here. We're all still here. You know what? It, to me, mm -hmm. it's a reflection of, of God. Absolutely. Him saying, you know what? I'm still in charge That's and right. I can line everything up and make this happen. Amen. And I, I was just in awe That's right. of what has to happen to make for that, for that event for that to occur. To happen. And that points to a creator. Amen. And I love so it. So true. So they said, we will not know the day or the time. Absolutely. Uh, but, and I think every day we should walk in that eternal, yep. eternity perspective, not just the what if this is going to happen. Yeah, but waiting for him. When, when yeah. Jesus says it's time, let us be ready. Yes. So, I love it. all right. Well, let's say good morning to some okay. friends who have joined us. My mama, Aww. Patty Field, you're the first on here this morning. Mom, I'm so impressed. I get my lateness from you. No. <laughs> <laughs> so great Aww. seeing you. I love you. Hello from Delaware. Hello, Jenny Broyles. Oh, Jenny. Jenny's watching. We love yes, Jenny so much. We do. Lisa Cooper from the Star City. Hey, Lisa, I saw online yesterday there was a group that gathered over there or in the Roanoke, kind of near the Star that uh, gathered and did some worship on wow. the mountainside there. It was some Liberty students, but also wow. some local folks who were on a hike and they kind of intersected That's really at the neat. star. And I saw some worship that was shared. It was so beautiful. That's awesome. That's how the Lord works. It is. That's really so, cool. All right. Well, let's see. We had the eclipse this week, but we also had a really cool expo. We did. So for those of you who don't know what an expo is, this was a business expo in all these businesses from the area actually came here to Eastlake. One of our one of our values here at Eastlake is community involvement. Mm. We want to be involved in our community, and it was such a great way to be involved. And um, we were able to host a bunch of people in here, tons of businesses. Wow! I mean, this place was full, and you know, SML's growing. SML is growing, and it, it was just really, really cool to see. We even have a Chick Fil A truck. Wow. Every, like once a week right now, right, which is amazing. It. We've made it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really neat. It, it was just a really cool time. My kids got a lot of free stuff. They went around and took all the freebies. But um, how many businesses great. were represented here at Eastlake? You know, I don't have that number. Okay, but, but it, it was, was through a lot. the the regional chamber. It Congress, was. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, so we were basically just the hosts. We were. Yep. It wasn't like 
all east we provided Lake. the space okay. and um they they came in they had somebody running it our own dave heckman had a booth back there i was gonna just say yes. our fabulous cameraman yep is a builder as well he is and he yes. had his business represented yeah so that's wonderful i love that yeah so, so it was a good time good I love time it. I love that we can be a part of the community in that yep. aspect yep. and provide a beautiful space Absolutely. for those things to happen. Yeah, it was so awesome. So that's great. I didn't get to make it down, but I hope to be at one in the near future. Yeah, of course. Um, so I love that so much. So um, we, if you were, you were at the 9 a.m. I was. Right? And yep. then we had baptisms. We did. So we had baptisms that are happening today here at Eastlake. Yep. So we had nine Baptized nine in the nine o'clock, and we nine. have nine coming up in the eleven. So and eighteen total today. Wow, that's beautiful. And you know what? God is moving and God is working. Mm. He is saving people in twenty twenty four. Amen. And um, it's just so neat to watch. It really is. And the cool it. thing is, it's all ages. Yeah, I've seen people, kids. little little kids, yep. proclaiming their faith all the way up to uh, an older gentleman last time. Yep. Um, who was going to be baptized? Yeah. So we are actually going to invite on a special guest to tell us all about his baptism. Yeah. So let's invite Noah to join us. We're gonna scoot Hello, over Noah. here and make, let you kind of pop in, in the, the middle, middle of us. <laughs> all right, so good morning, Noah. How are you? Great. Welcome to East Lake Live. Thank you. Have you been on East Lake Live before? I have not, but it's great to be here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> was the water warm this morning? Oh, it was like a hot tub. Oh, well, tub. that's kind of nice because it's been cold before. <laughs> yes. You don't want to be in a cold nice and warm. plunge, yeah, although yeah. that's popular right now, the cold plunge. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not but me. Noah, tell us a little bit about yourselves and tell our viewers who are watching. Yeah. Uh, what? How old are you? I am 17 years old. 17. Yes. All right. So are you a senior in mm -hmm. high school? And do you attend SMLC? I do. Yep. Amazing. Uh, fourth yeah. year. Fourth, fourth year. year, okay. Sure is. All right. So all four years of high school. All four years, yep. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Well, Noah, tell us about how you came to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when I first came here um, to the school, I did not know Jesus. I knew of him. You know, I grew up going to church, like in that community, but mm -hmm. I, I never had that personal relationship yeah. that you know everybody's always talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't understand the concept of relationship over religion. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so when I came here, I, I met you know, one of my best friends freshman year, his name was Khalil. Oh, he, um, yeah. you know, Christian guy, he, he was awesome. And then unfortunately mm -hmm. in, in the moment, you know, uh, freshman year, unfortunately he, he passed away, but yeah. that left me wondering what he had that I was missing out oh, on. Wow. Like, you know, wow. who, mm -hmm. I, I guess like what gave him that, that character and what was I yeah. missing? What was I? So with that, I just wanted to keep on seeking and seeking. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until just recently wow. that I really, understood and God really just revealed himself to me in my own mm. mind, my own walk, like what I need to be doing, how I need to be living, because wow. really wow. it's just by his grace and it's been more and more evident to me ever since just That's this incredible. past summer. That is yeah, I remember Khalil. Mm -hmm. That's, that is awesome. Yeah, God absolutely. used something that seems so awful. Tragic. Absolutely. And yeah. he, he brought about redemption. To bring that. That's so cool. Nothing yeah. is wasted. That's awesome. I'm a firm believer of that. Yeah. Mm. So Noah, you sound so mature and well-spoken <laughs> um, and just so filled with the faith of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm, awesome. I really admire and respect that. Mm, thank you. So taking the step today to be baptized, what does that mean to you? So to me, I mean, you know, we know that it's not baptism that saves us, but it's a mm -hmm. relationship with yeah, him and it's right. the mm -hmm. priority of his love in our lives. And with that, yeah how could I come to know this and not want to share it? How could I, wow. you know, be quiet about that? And I'm not going to, um, Amen. That's awesome. frankly, I just, you know, I, any opportunity that I can yeah. take to, you know, share what he's done for me, I would absolutely love yeah. to take it. But. That yeah. gives me so much hope I know, for that's awesome. your generation <laughs> yeah. in a world that seems so lost, so dark, mm. and but dark, there's still light and dying. Right. Yeah. That, yes. The light that yeah. you're sharing in Jesus is going to overcome the darkness mm. absolutely. in the world. Yeah. That, so Noah, that's awesome. That is amazing. So this was your proclamation of let me share my faith yeah. yes. in a more public yeah. way. Right. Yeah. And uh, others who can see now you and mm. see Jesus in you mm. and then carry yes. that on just like Khalil did right. for yeah. you. You're going to take that torch. Amen. Yeah. That's awesome. And pass that on. Yeah. Mm. So Noah, what about the future? So I will be attending Liberty University All uh, right. next year. My being Christian's class, gonna maybe. Study? Are you going to study business? <laughs> so I was, I was thinking business. Okay. Um, I'm not really necessarily pursuing much of a major right now, at least that I have my mindset on. Okay. I'm just sure. going to take time 
figure it out, try to, you know, hear what God has for me. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's been it's been stressful, obviously, trying to pick that degree yeah, and sorry. whatever. You know, trying to decide my life from seventeen years old. Such is, a commitment. You don't have to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't feel the yeah, pressure. Exactly. Okay. Um, Release that. <laughs> yeah. The uh, yeah. the security, knowing that God's going to put me wherever I'm supposed to be, that I mean, surpasses all that stress. Wow. But. Amen. That's awesome. Well, I hope you're in my class. Yeah. So you sign up for business classes, uh-huh. and we'll get to carry <laughs> on this awesome conversation. I'll be yes, business one hundred and one awesome. Tuesdays yes. and Thursdays. Yeah. There you okay, go. Okay, well that's the class I teach. No way. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, well, I'll see you, you there. You already know, professor. This is <laughs> this. it's meant to be. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, awesome. Noah, we are so proud of you. Yes. Thank you. So congratulations on your baptism today. Thanks so much. And your faith mm. in Jesus. Mm. Yeah. And what a sweet reminder for others yep. that it's about a relationship and not about a ritual or yeah. a routine, but so about good. a real mm. relationship. Yep. So, thank you for joining us. Yes, yes no, all right. Thank you. Yes. So, amazing. That's so cool. Powerful. I truly do feel like energized and encouraged. 100%. After speaking to a 17 year old yep. who is on fire for Jesus. Yes, and who understands relationship over religion. Yes. And that's, yes. guys, that's what it's all about. It is what it's all about. A relationship with Jesus, and you're always growing. That's right. Always learning new things, and I, I love it. It's awesome. What are the fruits? So, I'm going to just say, like, I definitely came from a place of ritual, routine, Mm -hmm. versus a real relationship with the living God that we serve. So I love that so much. I'm fired up. Yes, that's awesome. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's see um, who else has joined us that we haven't had a chance to say hello to you. Edith Guza. Welcome, Edith. Yes, Patricia Thurston. Good morning, Jess. Good to see your name on there. Jen Fike, we love you. Rhonda, Mike Maxey, where are you today? Oh, yes. <laughs> we miss We're missing you. Mike. <laughs> Ernie, Absolutely. good morning. Betty and Ernie, so great to see your names. Oh, Ernie was the nine. Oh, he wasn't. Yes, you were. Um, Yolanda, so great seeing you. Yeah, all kinds of good ones here. No. Joanne Jameson. This is awesome. I know. So many people joining us. That's awesome. And just a reminder, we can only see those of you who are logged in to Facebook Live or the Facebook um, Live app. We're not able to say good morning to those of you that are on YouTube or on the website. We're not purposefully leaving leaving people out. We're not trying to leave you out. (laughs) But for those of you that are saying hello to us on Facebook Live, we used to like... We usually like to call that out and just engage with you. We also know that you might be watching this back at another time. Um, But I did have a question I wanted to pose. Okay. What would y'all like to hear more about? For mm. those of you that tune in every week, is there something um, like a, something else that you would like to learn more sure. about or something that we can bring to you from this perspective? Yeah. So if you have a thought on that, we would love to know it. Share that in the comments and uh, let us know. Yeah, but absolutely. Anyway, Sandy, we have a lot more things happening we here. We do. <laughs> it's a busy time of year. We have a Connects class coming up. So for those who have never been to a Connects class, it is amazing. It's just um the story of Eastlake mm. and who we are. And it's, it's great. I encourage you to attend. That's, it's an awesome time. Is that for those who are looking to take like the next step in it's actually, partnering with Eastlake? Yeah. And, and it's, it's for those who want to get plugged more in involved, more. Okay. more plugged in. Okay. Um, one of the best ways to do that is to know who we are. Right. And, and that is done here in person. It is. Right. Not yep. a virtual option. It's not virtual. Okay. No. All right. And then we have a play coming up, right, about Esther? We do. My daughter's in it. Oh. She is. Which daughter? Carrie. Carrie. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Esther is coming up April 25th and 26th. For a time such as this. Yes. So that's going to be good. And then we have a missions conference May 3rd through 4th. So. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. We have so much going on. Dave is starting to tell us that we're also running out of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we are grateful that you have chosen yes. to be a part of the Eastlake family, uh, joining us on Sundays here. Yeah, and it's a good time. we're excited for the baptisms today. Yes, and baptisms, a good sermon, um, good worship as and always. And beautiful weather. Yes, it's going to be a good time. It is going to be a great time. Yep. So I'm excited for it. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of this beautiful, sunny Sunday, wherever yeah. you are, and that you have an amazing week ahead. I think we're going to have great weather again as well. Yes, so I'm ready. Take I'm ready. care. God bless. We yeah. love you. We love you. Good morning, church. Welcome to Eastlake on this beautiful Sunday morning. What a joy it is to see all of you today. There are still folks coming in, but while they're doing that, look at somebody you didn't ride with and say, it's good to see you today. Just tell them right now. 
Absolutely. You didn't know that many people were happy to see you, did you? All of you who are watching with us online, what a blessing it is to have you. It is a joy to serve Jesus together, isn't it? Hey, listen, if you're a new guest, we're so thankful you've joined us this morning. We want to know how we can serve you. And so in the seat back right in front of everyone, there's an orange card that says welcome on it. If you're a new guest and would just take a minute to fill one of those orange cards out, we would love to thank you for joining us at Eastlake today. And so if you do fill out one of those cards, there are ties and offerings boxes by each door as you leave the sanctuary in just a little while. You can drop those right into there. We also want you to know that somebody is praying for you during this service. Prayer matters, doesn't it, church? And during this service, there's a group of folks who are praying. If you have a need, there's going to be a number on the screen in just a little while. Text that number with that need, and those folks will be happy to pray about that for you. I love being part of a praying church, don't you? Amen, amen. Hey, there are some important days coming up here at Eastlake. We want you to know about them. First of all, this Wednesday night, remember all of our Wednesday night activities. This Wednesday night at 5.30, there's a free meal for everybody in the gym. And then at 6.30 p.m., there's kids programming, student programming, and then classes and a prayer service right in here for the adults to choose from. Make family nights, make Wednesday nights part of your family's rhythm during the week. And then this Saturday, listen, if you're relatively new to, this, to the church here, this Saturday we're offering a class for you. We call it our Connects class, and it's your opportunity to hear the history, the mission, and the vision of Eastlake Community Church. It's from about 8 to 11 o'clock. You can find the details and register for that on the Eastlake app. So go to the app under Upcoming Events, register for the Connects class. We hope to see you there. And then on April 25th and 26th, that's a Thursday and Friday night, the Fine Arts Department of Smith Mountain Lake Christian Academy is going to be presenting the Book of Esther. It's a dramatic presentation about the life of Queen Esther. You don't want to miss it. And so you can visit smlca.org, and you can pick up those tickets for that production, or today you can pick those tickets up out in the mall. Come on out and support those students as they use their gifts for Jesus. And then finally, I want you to know that all of you are invited on May 3rd through the 5th to our World Impact Conference. That is a missions conference that we're hosting here at Eastlake. All of our missionaries are going to be here. And so come and hear what God is doing and how He is changing lives literally around the world. If you want details for that, if you want to sign up, visit the Eastlake app. Again, under upcoming events, that information is there. Hey, speaking of the app, I've mentioned that a couple of times. Check that out. There's so much going on here at Eastlake. We have Kids Week coming. We have Youth Week coming. Ladies, there's some great ladies events coming up. All of that is on the app. Check it out and be a part of what God is doing right here at Eastlake. All of it is to help people know God and win others to Him. That's why we exist, right? Hey, today, today is going to be such a wonderful day. God has already done some wonderful work. And we're expecting Him to move in this service. Uh, Pastor Troy is away this morning. He is spending some time with Janelle, caring for her. Pastor Troy, if you're watching, we want you and Janelle both to know that we love you and we're praying for you. Amen, church? Amen. And so we miss both of you this morning. But Pastor David Harkoff is going to be sharing God's word with us. Pastor Ben and the worship team are coming. God deserves our worship, doesn't he? Amen. Stand to your feet, church, and let's lift our voices and worship the Lord together today.
worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. to the God who heals, we sing to the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way, cause he hung up on that cross, and he rose up from that grave, my God still rolling stones away, there's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. our testimony we were the beggars now we're royalty we were the prisoners now we're running free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace let the house of the lord sing praise come on sing that we were the beggars now we're royalty we were the prisoners we're running free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace let the house of the lord sing praise there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today and we won't be quiet no we shout out just do that right now can we shout out his praise say praise the lord with me praise the lord that sounds good man it is wonderful to be here in this place with you this morning celebrating what the lord has done for us amen we were the beggars and the prisoners now we're redeemed and set free children of god amen amen you can have a seat because we're gonna we're gonna celebrate a little differently now jesus said in luke 15 that when a sinner comes to repentance, there's rejoicing among the angels. And today we're going to celebrate with those who have recently come to repentance and faith in Christ. And they are going to be sharing their testimony through baptism this morning. So I invite you to continue worshiping with us and celebrating with us as they declare their trust and faith in God this morning. Let's do it. Come on.
Lord. Man, that's amazing. And uh, today we baptized 18 people. And, uh, yes. It's always uh, a privilege to celebrate uh, new life in Christ. But you know, one thing I've, I've learned is that Christ doesn't save us just for this moment, just to be able to say that we're free and that we are on our way to heaven and we're free from the fear of hell. We've been rescued. He does all those things and those things are wonderful, but he saves us to something as well. He saves us for a purpose. Paul said in Ephesians that those who have been saved are to be for the praise of his glory. He says that, that phrase three or four or five times in Ephesians chapter one. It tells us that we are his workmanship and we're created for good works. It tells us that we are to put off the things of the former life that we, that we walked in before and we're put on a new man of righteousness and holiness tells us that we are now as children of light to walk in that way. He doesn't just rescue us from sin and save us from hell, but he makes us like Christ. He makes us holy. So this morning, I want us to sing one more song together that's just that prayer of, Lord, would you be magnified in every piece of my life, every part of my life from this moment forward? Would you be magnified? Would you be glorified? Would you stand with us and let's sing this song together? Were creation suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues to lift one cry Then from north to south and east to west We'd hear Christ be magnified Were the whole earth echoing his eminence, his name would burst from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain tops. We hear cries be magnified. be crucified with you cause death is just the doorway into resurrection life and if I join you in your sufferings 
then I'll join you when you rise and when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints my heart will still be singing my song will be the same sing that again oh I won't bow to idols I'll stand strong and worship you and if it puts me in the fire I'll rejoice with your there too I won't be for my feelings I hold fast to what is true And if the cross brings transformation I'll be crucified with you Cause death is just the doorway Into resurrection life And if I join you in your suffering Then I'll join you when you rise magnify him in prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, you are worthy of our praise in everything that happens to us in life. We praise you this morning, Jesus, because you are the great redeemer. We just watched in the early service and now in this service, many people who have been redeemed by your precious blood make a public profession to the whole world that they are now going to be one of your followers. We praise you that you are still redeeming men and women in 2024. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are still reaching down and delivering us from sin. You are bringing us from death to spiritual life. You are setting our lives on a brand new path, Lord, and we praise you for it today. You are still as strong and mighty to save today as you were a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago. And we praise you that you are the Redeemer. We magnify your name, O Redeemer, this morning. We praise you this morning because you are our protector. Last night, Lord, a minority of evil men from a precious nation decided to send rockets and drones at Israel. And by your divine grace, they were able to stop 99% of all of those rockets last night. We praise you for your protection in our lives and in the life of Israel and all the people around the world that you love so much, oh God. You are mighty God. You're worthy of our praise this morning. And then, Lord, we praise you that you are still with us in the most difficult, challenging days of our lives. You do not leave us. Across this audience, Lord, at this 11 o'clock service this morning, there are many people who came into this place with big burdens. 
problems bigger than they are. Oh, would you remind them this morning that you are the God of all problems, Lord, I pray. You are the God who does not abandon us in our worst moments. You will never leave us. You'll never forsake us. Lord, all of us are walking through this battle with Pastor Troy and Janelle. This week, as he and I were talking, Lord, I said to him, it looks like God is going to allow you guys to experience the full cup of suffering that can be experienced in this life. And yet, Lord, we just sang this morning that death is just the doorway into resurrection life. And we give you praise this morning that, Lord, no matter what Pastor Troy and Janelle are walking through, what they may have to walk through, we have watched as you have helped them to go deeper in their love for you. And they trust you more today than they've ever trusted you in their lives. That's your divine grace. We give you praise that you're with us this morning. But, Lord... This entire congregation right now, we're reaching out to you on behalf of Pastor Troy and Janelle. And we're praying that you would help them and give them mercy and strength and comfort and encouragement. And whatever you can give them right now, we ask that you would give them. We love them, Lord, with all of our hearts. And you love them more than that. So touch them today, we pray. Now, Lord, it is time for Pastor David to come and open your word to us. We came to the house of worship this morning to hear from your word. And as our pastors have been preaching through the book of John, you've been speaking mightily to us. So this morning, I pray that you would speak again. I pray that you would anoint Pastor David. And I pray that something divine would happen in our hearts and minds so that we leave this place different because of your touch upon our hearts and minds today. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Hey, kids, it's time for Kid Church. You can go meet the volunteers who are waving at you back in the aisles. See you soon. Good morning, East Lake. Good morning, East Lake. Good morning. Amen. We're so glad you joined us for worship today. And, uh, and there's just nothing like being with God's people on the Lord's Day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Weren't those baptisms great? Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. I was thinking as I got like a front row seat there, and I was thinking about this verse from Romans 1, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation for anyone who would believe? And the other thing I thought, I'm a little competitive. I was sitting up there thinking, how's that taste, Satan? How does that taste? Because here's the deal. God's kingdom is going forward in this world, and we get to be a part of it. Exciting times here today. Thank you for being with us. I'm inviting you uh, to John chapter 13 this morning. So for a few months now here at East Lake, we've been on this uh, journey through the gospel of John. And since we've started this journey, Pastor Troy uh, has pointed out this key text, actually from towards the end of John, John 20, 31, in which John sort of says, he wrote this gospel so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you would have life in his name. That's the goal. And so every account in John, you know, the, the unique way John starts at creation in his gospel, which is sort of different than the other gospels. And then he, he takes about 12 chapters or so going through uh, about three years of Jesus' adult life. And then he spends about half of the book dealing with just a few days before and during and after the resurrection. He's doing all of this for a clear motive. He wants his readers to know who Jesus is. Like without a doubt, He's the Son of God. He's the Messiah. He's the Creator. He's God of God, light from light, right? He's true God from true God. He's co-equal with God the Father. And more than all of the data, he wants us to experience new life in and through and with Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's his mission for writing this gospel. And so in our text today, um, it's Passover. It's Thursday evening, so we're about a little less than 24 hours from the death of Christ on the cross. And Jesus is eating this, this meal with his disciples. 
So we're just maybe a couple of hours before the garden and the betrayal of Judas and then the crucifixion. So it's, a, it's an important time in the life of Christ with these disciples. And while all the Gospels sort of record this uh, Passover supper, this Last Supper event, only John uh, wrote about this specific event that we're looking at today that occurs uh, during the meal. So let's read this together. This is John chapter 13. We're going to begin in verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of the world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, he rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, what I'm doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, the one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That's why he said, not all of you are clean. And when he had washed their feet, put on his outer garments, and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. This is God's word. Let's pray together. Oh God, would you help us today by your spirit to hear your word that we can understand And that by understanding, we can believe. And that by believing, we can follow you with faithfulness and obedience. Lord, that we would seek your honor and your glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. And everyone said, Church, for many reasons, this is an astounding text. And to be honest, the longer I've sat with it, the the deeper and and more convicting uh, it has become. There's a lot here, uh, to be honest with you, but with the Lord's help, with the Lord's help, we're going to look at three key communications from Christ in the text. Three. Aren't you glad I didn't say eight today? Amen? (laughs) Amen. I actually heard about a pastor on Easter. He preached the 15 infallible proofs of the resurrection. Fifteen. I think he's still preaching that sermon, maybe. But today, (laughs) three key messages from Jesus from this text, and then we're going to think together about some implications for us today. So first, I'd like you to notice with me a demonstration of humility. We see this in verses uh, 1 to 5. As we said earlier, the disciples uh, are with Jesus at Passover. Uh, This was a high point in in the Jewish calendar. They um, celebrated with sort of like this worship meal, the mighty works of God, on their behalf. God's rescue of the Israelites from slavery uh, in Egypt. So it was a celebration. It was a party. They threw it every year. It was about him and redemption. You know, they were no longer slaves in Egypt. But in Luke's record of this night, 
we see the disciples, again, as they were often prone to do, like just missing it in a big way. And instead of celebrating, um, they, were, they were arguing. Uh, so maybe some of you have some relatives. Anybody have relatives that show up to the family gatherings and they just like fight with everybody about everything and ruin the party? Any, some of you are hesitant because you're sitting with your relatives. Yeah, uh, thank you for your honesty, sir. Yes. That's, that's what these guys were doing. Look at this verse, uh, Luke twenty two twenty four. 24. says this, during the meal, a dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. Wow. So after all of the miracles they'd seen Jesus perform, water to wine, the feeding of the 5,000, plus women and children with five loaves and two fish. Just a week before, they were there when Lazarus walked out of the tomb at the command of Jesus. They had seen all of that. And yet, sitting in the presence of Jesus, the Son of God, they were fighting about which of them was the greatest. I was talking to some of my students, high school students, I was saying, how can we... What would that be like in our culture? And this is the best thing we came up with. It was like, imagine if we have a middle school basketball team, okay, which we have one of those. Guys and gals, way to go. Championship. Much love to you. Not criticizing you today. But imagine a middle school basketball team sitting with dinner at, with Michael Jordan, fighting and arguing about which of them was the best baller in the room. Can you imagine that scene? Like, What? These guys were just missing it. They still didn't get it. Probably trotting out their personal achievements, their gifts, maybe, maybe kind of angling for a, a higher seat of position at the Passover dinner table. And here's, here's, the, here's the deal with all of this, too. This is not the first time they've done this. Okay? The Gospels record sort of these regular fights about position and greatness among them. At, at, at one point, I think a mama even got involved and was like, hey, Jesus, can you give my son a little future promotion? I got two guys with you. I mean, all of them are equal, but some are more equal than others. You know what I'm saying? Like, can we give these guys a little promotion? Um, by the way, that doesn't help your children either. Um, that's what? What? Okay, moving on. You get free stuff on Sundays. Isn't that great? But self-focused, the desire for promotion and rank, notoriety, a meal about the mighty works of God in the presence of God himself. They made it about them. Unless we're prone to be too hard on these guys, how often have we made gatherings about the mighty works of God in the presence of God? How, how quickly have I become self-focused and self-centered? Right? But here's what I love about Jesus. He's so patient. Isn't that good news? Isn't, aren't you glad today that Jesus is so patient? Pastor Jonathan mentioned this last week. But like, he doesn't throw a fit and throw us out the first or second or tenth time we're slow to understand something. Uh, verse, verse 1 of the text actually says he loved them till the end. So in love, he is so patient with these men. And yet, here's the other side of it. He doesn't let their self-focused pride and arrogance go unchallenged. But instead of laying into them, any, anybody like me is like, man, they, they could just use a good lashing, okay? A good, don't you know, don't you know who you're sitting with? Instead of doing that, Jesus gets up from dinner and takes off his, his jacket, his outer cloak, and he ties a towel around his waist. And he kneels down, the basin, the towel around him, and begins to wash his disciples' feet. He shows them what true greatness looks like. Some of this is lost on us, but, you know, if, if, you're, if you're living in the first century in the ancient Near East, you're walking around in sandals all day on dusty roads, and so this was a necessity. And actually, uh, this was performed by the lowest ranking servant in the household and usually it was a gentile so this this was a task that was below even the jewish servants 
in the house. And I, I kind of imagine the scene in my mind. I hear the bickering and the arguing, and then I hear the room kind of get quiet as Jesus bends down and begins to wash feet. The creator of the cosmos, the one, uh, the writer of the he- to the Hebrews says in, in Hebrews 1, he upholds the universe by the word of his power. That God, the creator, stooping to wash the feet of his creation. Wow! And in the midst of all this arrogant arguing, knowing full well their weaknesses and their failures and their shortcomings and their sin, our Lord does the work of the lowest ranking person in the house. And don't miss this either. Um, John is actually very particular about pointing out Judas in this narrative. Jesus kind of reminds them at the end, someone's going to betray me, and he actually quotes in uh, First Testament scripture. So like, part of this betrayal is a fulfillment of prophecy. Jesus knew, verse 11, he knew what was coming from Judas, and yet he bends over to wash the feet of a traitor. It's no wonder that one of the earliest Christian hymns probably recorded in Scripture, Philippians 2, Paul says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he was God, did not count equality with God the Father as something to be grasped, but he made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. More on this in a bit, but at church, it's, it's this humble posture of spirit revealed in Christ, kneeling with the water and the towel that desperately needs to be recaptured by the church in this moment. A demonstration of humility. Second, we have an explanation of cleansing. Don't you love Peter? I love Peter. Uh, how, anybody identify? Anybody identify with Peter a little bit? You're kind of like a. He, Peter was kind of like we, we call uh, a ready, fire, aim kind of guy, right? <laughs> like every day was no filter Friday for him. And he, what I love about him, is, thank you for that. Uh, he uh, he just says what everybody else was thinking, right? This, like Lord, you ain't touching my feet. Right? And Jesus does something here. I think it's so great. He often did this in these everyday moments. But he seizes this opportunity from this everyday moment to make a very important spiritual point. He was just a, he was just a master uh, teacher. And so he's at, the, uh, he's at the docks calling the disciples. Imagine that. They're messing with their nets and everything. And he says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Right? John 2. They're, they're in the temple he, he cleanses the temple, and the Jews ask him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? And he says, looks around, looks at the temple, big, grand, ornate building, and he says, destroy this temple, three days I'll raise it up again. And they said, whoa, 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 it's taken 46 years to build this. You're going you're gonna to raise it up in three days if it falls? And he's talking about what? His resurrection. He's making a, a spiritual point with an everyday thing. And so here he does this with Peter. Peter says, in verse 6 to 11, essentially, Lord, you ain't washing my feet. And Jesus says, unless I wash you, Peter, you're not part of me. And then Peter, again, I love him. He says, in that case, God, give me the full body wash. Right? <laughs> I love that. But Jesus says to him, like, you don't need, you've already had the full wash. You need a foot wash today. And we could, we could spend some time here. There's some really nifty language things that kind of go on here in the script. But here's, here's the spiritual point, and there's really two of them that Jesus was making with Peter. First, entrance into the kingdom of God is gained through a cleansing that only Jesus can perform. So there's no such thing as self 
cleansing, self-salvation. In a culture that loves individualism and stories where people pull themselves up by their own bootstraps, so to speak. Jesus said, that's not the way the kingdom works. Um, actually, have any of you ever been uh, part of a tradition or maybe you've been in a service where there's been sort of some uh, foot washing? Anybody besides me? Okay. Oh, whoa. Okay, cool. Yeah. The rest of you are just going to have to take my word for this. We used to do, uh, do these uh, services at the college I taught at. But it's actually easier to wash someone's feet than it is to have someone wash your feet. Can I get an amen? Okay? It takes humility. Like, I'll wash my own feet. Thank you very much. Right? There's the biggest barrier for people coming to the Lord often is not deep theological questions and concerns. I say this in love today, but it's pride. Right? In our fallenness, we don't want to admit what this book says is true about us before Jesus. We're stained by sin. We're affected by sin. And only Jesus can cleanse us. The baptisms, actually, that we celebrated this morning sort of um, illustrate this. Buried with Christ in death, we say. And we plunge them under the water and they come up raised to walk in newness of life. What does this water sort of symbolize and represent? Well, it's, it washes. It cleanses. And until we come to the end of ourselves and admit that we are in need of a cleansing that only Jesus can perform and accept that cleansing by faith, we are still outside the kingdom of God. And let me I can just step into this a little bit further here. Verse 11, Jesus says, not all of you are clean. Who's he talking about? He's talking about Judas, right? Judas, who spent years with the very best Bible teacher and small group leader the world has ever known. He saw miracles. And yet, Jesus says, he wasn't cleansed. It's possible to be around great Christian teaching, church, to be around the activity of the church, and still not know Christ or receive his cleansing, right? Jesus' words are true. If we don't accept his cleansing, we have no part with him. Second point of the interaction, Jesus says to Peter, you still need cleansing, though. Uh, he says this actually... Uh, in verse 10, it's like, you don't need to redo the initial wash, okay? But you do need a foot wash, Peter. And, and the way this works, uh, metaphorically, Jesus is essentially saying, church, even after salvation, we still have need of cleansing. Like, not the initial cleansing do-over, okay? But a fresh work of God in our lives that cleanses thought patterns and attitudes and actions that are still not in line with this book or the character of, of Christ. And when God points those things out in our lives, like we don't go back to square one with him. Aren't you grateful for that? We don't start over. Hey, we're not, we're not dead in our sins anymore. We're not in a posture of rebellion against God. But he does cleanse us. So this isn't a one and done thing. This is a life of continual cleansing, continued obedience, being formed into the image of Christ. I love... Um, I love hymns, and um, a pastor named Robert Lowry from the 19th century wrote a probably very familiar hymn to many of you, What Can Wash Away My Sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole? Not just wash away the sins, but who, who can make me whole again? Transform me. It's, it's nothing but the blood of Jesus that does church from start to finish. Our hope rests in him and his cleansing power. And all God's people said, Amen. last this morning, Jesus gives us a promise of blessing. So he, he finishes the foot washing, and in verse 12, he asks them, like, do you get what I just did for you? Because you call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, I'm both of those. So follow my example. 
I love what one theologian said about this passage. He said, a teacher is to be believed, and a Lord is to be obeyed. And so Jesus here not only gives uh, instructions here as a teacher that we should hear and believe, we have some knowledge here he gives us. We understand, but as Lord, he gives a command in verse 13. And he says, therefore, wash one another's feet. So in obedience to Jesus, the ushers are coming. I'm just kidding. <laughs> They've got buckets and towels, yeah. Just pair up with somebody you don't know. That You have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing. Thought we could make, wait, wait, wake some of you up a bit today. Um, I've, I've been in some powerful church services that it, have included this sort of ritual. It's a beautiful moment. Um, but the point that Jesus is making here is that we are supposed to be a people defined by humble service to one another. Church, there's no such thing as ladder climbing in the body of Christ. In fact, our Lord on this night, as the disciples were sort of having this, this goat discussion amongst themselves and fighting, he tells them uh, in Luke 22, 27, I believe, he says, I am among you as one who serves. And I think we should be honest about this, like super clear. This is not optional, like reserved for a few super spiritual people. This is the defining characteristic of the Christian community. Supernatural love, Jesus would later say in John 13, 40, 34, 35. You were supposed to love one another as I have loved you. This is how the world will know that we are disciples of Christ, by our deeds of love towards one another, right? This is like the best apologetics course for the reality of the Christian message, okay? Because our world can't love like this. In fact, the world's systems are set up against this way of loving. And so they look on from the outside and say, that has to be from God. I love what uh, one Christian writer, his name is Tertullian, he was a second century Christian writer, and he said this, but it is mainly the deeds of a love so noble that lead many to put a brand upon us. Well, these outsiders putting a brand on us. See, they say, how they love one another. I think we should say that these deeds aren't a means of earning anything, okay? But they are an expression of our new life in Christ. And notice verse 17. If you know these things, blessed are you if you talk about them. I'm sorry. Blessed are you if you do them. I think we need to say this often, especially to younger folk. Younger folk, if you're in here today, thank you for being here. But listen, there is great blessing associated with obeying the commands of Jesus. Can I get an amen? There's great blessing associated with obeying the command. This is not, oh, we have to go serve other people. I guess we're Christians and we don't want to upset Jesus. No, we get to. And when we do, there's blessing from Jesus. Those who serve like Christ are assured of blessings from Christ. And um, I would say this posture of humility is a blessing not only to individuals, but it's a, this posture is a blessing to families and churches. And by God's grace, it's a blessing to the world and witnesses to the world that we really know God. If all you've ever done is live for yourself, this is a freeing thing. It's a blessing to live for others, to be involved in something so much bigger than our little worlds. And I would say this humble posture is the key for a blessed life. It's the key, a blessed life, not an easy life. Don't, don't mishear me today, but a blessed life, the life with God, a life of joy. Jesus says, you adopt this posture, there's a promise of blessing for you. So here's the question for us today. 
in light of this astounding text, this astounding love, the creator who stooped to wash feet. The question is, what kind of people should we be? Um, here's a guy. I was sermon prepping, and Google brings up some awesome things. How awesome is that? Yeah. We tend to miss it with this discussion. On one hand, you know, you know, we have people that are seeking to be known as humble. Now, I'm so humble. Aren't you impressed? Right? <laughs> On the other side, we have people that think humility means constantly dragging yourself to the mud and kind of walking around stoop-shouldered. And if someone says something nice to you, you're like, oh, I'm just terrible, but thank you. <laughs> Somehow God redeemed me. No, you're made in the image of God. And actually, this is for free, but your self-obsession about all the stuff you don't think you're very good at isn't humility either. It's just false humility. Free stuff for you today. Yes. But Jesus' question in verse 12 to his disciples, do you understand this, is the question he's still asking us today. Church, I don't need to tell you this, but we live in a world that says the weak serve the strong. The poor serve the rich. The subordinates serve the superiors. The office worker serves the CEO. And sadly, this mindset can all too easily creep into the church. And instead of servants called by Christ to emulate the actions of Christ, we end up with celebrities who draw attention to themselves and build their brand and their following on the backs of people they should be serving. Pastor Ben mentioned Ephesians earlier. Paul says in Ephesians, but you have not so learned Christ. Hear me this morning. Those who seek position and power and prestige in Christ's church do so against his example and teaching. Identifying as Christ's disciple is not a path to promotion, but a call to others-oriented love and service. And this mindset, church, you before me, results in simple, often unnoticed, supernatural deeds of love for the good of others. I hope this morning that you want to do great things. Is anybody today to say, I want to do great things for God, for the glory of God? I just, I feel that so deeply today. But here, hear me today. Here's the truth. These often unnoticed, humble deeds of love are the great things. But we should be honest today, too, because having this mindset and posture is not always easy. Can I get an amen? Okay? Our world, this place we live, okay, they have a default setting, and it's not the default setting, the character of Christ. I'll just confess this to you today. I'll just step out and say it. Um, about a year and a half ago, I wrote a giant, boring paper on this passage. It's so boring. Oh, it's, oh, bless my wife, wherever she is. She proofread it for me uh, during my doctoral study. Oh, stuff you would never want to even know about this passage. It doesn't matter that much. I can tell you about it. Catch me after service if you want to go to sleep, okay? <laughs> Knowing all that blah, 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 you know what I might struggle with? Probably will struggle with tomorrow morning. Doing what Jesus commands us clearly to do in this passage just to humbly serve. But church, if our Lord and teacher washed feet, what task could possibly be below us? Right? If he patiently served a bunch of slow-to-understand guys, and you and me, how could we not follow his example? And if Jesus even stoop to wash the feet of a traitor how can we not love the enemies of God who are in this world because don't you know that a Saul he was the equivalent basically 
of a modern-day ISIS fighter. He was a religious zealot. He was arresting people and was there when they killed Stephen himself. But in a moment, a Saul can become a Paul because of the grace of God. And often those folks are drawn to the reality of Christ, not because of some apologetics course, although I love those things and we need doctrinal precision now more than ever in the church. We need to be so clear about what we say. But the humble deeds of love, the supernatural love of Christ in us, often draws some of even the hardest cases to the Lord. These are the great things. This is greatness in the kingdom of God. And God is calling all of us today, not just a few, but the body, an army of people, past listening to Jesus, to living like Jesus. Receive the teachings of Christ, of course, but live it out. He said, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. This is how we see progress in our walk with the Lord, right? Not a collection of facts about this book, not so you can just own everybody at Bible trivia at youth camp, or fight with people online about obscure doctrines that you think you're just right about. Okay, that's not the goal of this walk with the Lord. It's a participation in the life of Jesus in this world. Not just listening, but living. Even if no one else notices or gives us a pat on the back for our service. We don't seek to be known as humble servants. We simply and humbly serve one another. And so demonstrate to the world that we are disciples, followers of the one who washed feet. Philippians 2 says this. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy. Paul says, by being of the same mind, having the same love, being of full accord and of one mind, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which is yours in Christ Jesus. John would, would later say in little John, 1 John, he wrote uh, some stuff towards the end of the, the scriptures as well, and he said in 1 John 3.18, Dear children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth. Would you stand with me today? You can bow your heads. I think there are are at least three responses we could make. <clears throat> Maybe you're here today, and as we talked about this initial cleansing, you realized, hey, I've been around Christianity for a while. I've been around the, the actions of the church, and I've heard sermons. Uh, but I have never accepted the cleansing of Christ on my behalf. If that's you today, I've got some good news. Your story can be the same one that we celebrated today and all these folks who were baptized. That could be your story too. A new life. A life of blessing. If you need to make that step today, we want to be so clear about what Jesus is calling us to. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. That's the path of blessing for you. If you need to make that step there will be some folks around the front that would love to pray with you after the service. Maybe you're here today and like Peter, you feel like you need a, a foot washing. In the course of the service, maybe uh, the Lord revealed to you an attitude, an action, some step you need to make forward in your walk with him. If that's you today, just, I would say in these moments, just talk to him about that. And say, Lord, I want to I wanna grow in grace. I accept cleansing from that. I'm going to continue to walk with you, obey you. But for all of us, how can we see our Savior, the Creator, 
God from eternity past on his knees, cleaning dirty feet of some dudes that were really slow and not be moved. Oh God, I want to be like you. I want to follow your example. So whatever, whatever prayer you need to pray today, let's talk to the Lord together as we close. God, we're just, just want to just want to bow in your presence today. You're so great. This, this account is so incredible. Jesus, you gave us such an example to follow, to, to walk as you've walked. And Lord, we confess it's challenging. It's impossible without your spirit in us. But this week, in the ordinary places that you set us down, washing dishes and changing diapers, Whatever it is, God, help us to have the mind of Christ. None of these tasks are beneath us, Lord. We, we do them like you did. And so demonstrate to the world that we're followers of you. For the one today that needs the initial cleansing, God, this could be a bread letter day for them. I pray that you would draw them and convict them of their sin and help them in humility to bow the knee to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, for anyone in here today, maybe you've talked to, to them about something specific in their life where you want to you wanna grow them. You want to make them more like you. God, help us to accept those corrections from a loving, patient God, knowing that what you want is good and right and best for us. God, I pray that this church, all of us, me, God, that our posture would be one of humility. Jesus, that we would witness to this surrounding community, our neighbors, our, our employees, God, our coworkers, our friends, that we are your disciples. Not in just how we talk, but in how we live. We pray this in your mighty name, Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Pastor Ben. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise, Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified, the altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified, let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Amen. Let's live in humility and servanthood and love this week. If you would like to praise someone, there are people at the front ready to pray with you. God bless you. Have a great day. You're dismissed.